This is Bill Carey. I'm the editor of Avionics Magazine. I am at the ATC Global Conference in Amsterdam, and I'm speaking today with Dave Jensen, the SmartPath Product Manager for Honeywell Aerospace. Dave, thank you for speaking with us today. Thank you, Bill. What is Honeywell emphasizing here in Amsterdam? This year we're focusing on the certification of the SmartPath ground-based augmentation system, also known as GBAS. This is a precision approach and landing system for airports that guides aircraft in through bad weather. And in September of last year, we received the world's first and only system design approval from the FAA and are now letting the world know that SmartPath and GBAS as a technology is here. Can you describe uh, how SmartPath works and what the different components of the system are? Sure. SmartPath uh, is installed at an airport. Uh, you only need one GBAS system or SmartPath system to cover the entire airport, all of its runways and all of its approaches. It would be replacing the instrument landing system, a technology that's been with us for many years that has guided aircraft in using basically a, a beam of energy that the aircraft finds and follows down to the runway. SmartPath is digital. It's broadcasting in all directions like a cell phone or a Wi-Fi. The aircraft in the area can receive the signal. They get the information to provide both accuracy and integrity using GPS and then follow the predefined paths to get to the airport in any weather. The other be benefits of SmartPath are that it is able to increase capacity in a couple different ways. One is you can use multiple glide slopes. Rather than following your traditional three degree ILS glide slope, you can tailor different arrival glide slopes for different aircraft, different performance, uh, different wind conditions, whatever. The other thing is that you can displace the threshold, meaning your touchdown point is further down in the runway. The benefit to that is the aircraft using the displaced threshold or the higher approach is actually above the one in front of it, so it is not receiving as much turbulence from the wake vortex. So again, this is one thing that can help in uh, Next Gen and Cesar as they look at other ways of reducing separation between aircraft in this phase of flight and increasing capacity. You mentioned GBAS, ground-based augmentation system. Uh, that term is interchangeable with LAS, local area augmentation system. What has been the adoption of GBAS or LAS on a worldwide basis? So GBAS as a technology, meaning using GPS for precision approach and landing, has been around since the mid-90s. Um, we received a certification in 1997 for a special category one, which required both the ground and the airborne to be certified together, so it was kind of a matched set. Um, in the late 90s, it was realized that we wanted to have anybody manufacture the airborne and anybody manufacture the ground system so they could be interoperable and that's when the GBAS movement started and since that time there's probably been about 20 stations installed worldwide but of the certified uh, configuration that we just received there are five installed in the world right now two in the US two in Europe and one in Australia. And, and can you uh, tell me specifically what those locations are? Sure, the, the U.S. has installed them at Memphis, Tennessee at the airport there. That was a site that was instrumental in getting our certification and our approval from the FAA. Uh, Newark, New Jersey has installed one at Liberty International Airport. And in Europe, the one system is at Bremen, Germany, okay. and the other one is at Malaga, Spain. And then, of course, Sydney, Australia is another location. What are you hearing back from the operational community as to how the system is working? So the operational community really likes it not only in the bad weather but in good weather too because it can really allow the pilots to get a nice, repeatable, stable signal and it allows them to get very good stabilized approaches, meaning they've got everything set up, the airplane's configured well, and they make those repeatable landings time after time. If anything, we've heard some anecdotal information from some airports that complain about the landings being right on the center line and that nose wheel feeling the center lights as it rolls down the airfield. Uh, the other thing that the uh, airline community really likes is how well it complements R&P, how, how you can uh, design an R&P approach to terminate in a GLS final, giving you the fuel efficiency and the track mile savings that you see with R&P, but continue to use that in bad weather where sometimes a much higher minimum is associated with that R&P approach. Well, Dave, uh, SmartPath is a, certainly an interesting system that will contribute to both uh, safety and efficiency in the airspace, and thank you very much for discussing it with us today. Happy to be here, Bill. Thank okay, you. Okay, thank you.